Hi everyone, my name is Federico and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started with Docosaurus. This video is going to be part of a video series on how to use, how to get started and how to configure Docosaurus. So I will take you through all the necessary steps to configure your project locally, build it and then deploy it to either GitHub Pages and Netlify. You will be able to find all these video related to Docosaurus in a playlist on YouTube and I will put a link down in the video description below. This is the playlist that I'm referring to and I'm going to be uploading video inside this playlist. As you can see already there are some videos and last year I've released an hour long video in which I explain how to get started with Docosaurus, change the main settings and then deploy it on Netlify and GitHub Pages. This is the video that I'm referring to. But then I've noticed that in version 2.0.0 of Docosaurus some small things have changed. So I've decided to release this video series in which I break all these steps in different videos so it's going to be easier for you to look for the appropriate video and to find a tutorial on how to perform that specific task. So why Docosaurus? Docosaurus can help you to ship a beautiful documentation website in no time. It's very easy to configure, it's very easy to get started and super simple to deploy. Usually to build a documentation website is expensive, it takes time. But here you can just focus on your content and you can get started very quickly. And Docosaurus offers straight out of the box a lot of advanced features such as versioning and then you can translate your website in multiple languages as well as theme customization. I just want to show you a couple of websites that were built using Docosaurus. For instance, the React Native website was built using Docosaurus. This is, for example, a website that I have developed that has the documentation section, a landing page, and also the blog page. So this is what is going to look like your website. Of course, you can configure it, and then you can have the blog page. As you can see, the navigation in Docosaurus is fantastic. You have a sidebar on the left, which you can use it to go through your content. And then if you have headings inside your page, automatically Docosaurus will create this navigation bar here on the right. Then Docosaurus straight out of the box offer a lot of nice features and a lot of components that are automatically built, such as the footer, the top navigation bar, and this navigation between pages. So let me show you one final example, such as the Jest website that was built also using Docosaurus. So as you can see, the overarching template is very similar, but here you can see some other features that I haven't shown you before, such as the translation in different languages. You can see the search bar at the top and the versioning here. So this is a very good example, and this is what we're going to be able to build and deploy in very simple steps. So just follow along with me and I will show you all the things that you need to know in order to get started with Docosaurus. Some advantages also about using Docosaurus are that it's built with React. So then you're going to be able to embed inside your Docosaurus website very easily some React components. It offers some plugins as I showed you before, the, the translation in different languages or the search, these are just few of the plugins that are offered, is SEO friendly. What does it mean? It means that Docosaurus will build uh, statically some HTML pages for you. So all uh, the HTML pages will be pre-rendered. So you're going to get uh, a good rating uh, in search optimization. So for instance, uh, the Google algorithm will be able to parse your website and you're going to get a good SEO score. It's also powered by Markdown X, so not only you can write very simply your documentation in Markdown, but then you can also write your documentation using Markdown X, which allows you to embed inside Markdown some React component. It's very fast. And you will see, as you can see, when I navigate through the website, the website is very fast and very responsive. So it's extremely, it's extremely good. And finally, you can deploy it for free on either Netlify or GitHub Pages or any other uh, provider that offer this uh, service for free, such as Firebase.
So let's get started with Docosaurus. In order to get started with Docosaurus, you need to have two things installed on your computer. One is Node.js and the other one is Yarn. The scope of this video will be to set up a project locally on your computer and build it locally and test it locally. In the next video, we're going to see how to deploy to Netlify. Of course, you can also deploy to GitHub Pages, and I have a video about that, so we'll put a link down in the video description. As well, you should be able to see a card at the top, or you can just search on YouTube, Deploy Docusaurus 2 on GitHub Pages. So let's get started with setting up a project locally with Docusaurus 2. So the first thing to get started is, as I previously mentioned, I need to have Node and Yarn installed on my computer. I can check that I have Node and Yarn installed on my computer, by opening the command line here in, the in my Windows computer. If you have Mac, that's the same. And you can type in the command line node-v and you can type yarn-v. If you don't have node and yarn installed on your computer, just uh, um, Google install node and install yarn and you will find all the instruction how to install node and yarn on your computer based on your operative system. The second thing that we need to do is to go into the directory where we want to have our project set up. For this example on YouTube, I'm going to have my project set up in users, my username, and downloads. The command that we're going to use to create a project with Docusaurus is npx at docusaurus forward slash init at latest init. I'm going to call the project YouTube example. In your case, of course, you can change this name, and the default name usually is my website. And then we're going to use a template. In this case, we are going to use the template which is classic. Classic is the only template which is currently supported by Docosaurus, so I would recommend you to use just a simple and classic um, template. If you have already a project, so if you have already some source code about your project, you can initiate the Docusaurus um, documentation website inside your project as well. And in order to do that, you could have just CD into your repository of your project, and then you could have done use the same command that I've used here. As you can see, the project is being created here in my downloads folder. It's going to take a few seconds. It's going to install all the packages and it's going to be ready to be tested locally in a few seconds. You might get a message here at the beginning and it's asking you to install the Docosaurus init latest. If you get that message, just press yes and you should be able to see all these logs as I'm seeing here on the screen. I'm going to fast forward this section, just waiting that everything gets compiled and installed locally, and then I will get back once the project has been initialized on my computer. Great. Our project was successfully created and was called YouTube example as we specified. Now the only thing that we need to do is to CD inside our repository, so we can CD inside YouTube example. And then, as is written here on the screen, we have to say yarn start. And it's going to be opening automatically a new tab in your browser. So great, this has launched the development server here locally in our computer. And we can see our website here on localhost port 3000. The other thing that I want to show you in this video is the main project structure, which is going to be very important for the upcoming videos because we need to understand that and how we can change this, the file and we're going to change the look of the website. Let me open this project here using WebStorm. Of course, you don't have to use WebStorm. You can use any other IDE for opening your project such as VS Code, we can see our YouTube example folder, which as we defined before is inside downloads YouTube example. Then here we have some subdirectories. So blog will contain all our blogs that we have in our website. So let me just quickly show you that. So here, if, if I go in, to, in my site here at the top and I open this bar here because the window is in half screen, but if I resize it, you're going to see at the top that there is blog section. And this blog section will contain the three blogs 
welcome, hello, and hola that we have here on the left side. Then we have the build folder. We don't have to worry too much about the build folder, but we are going to be uh, uploading these on Netlify manually, or we can configure that uh, Netlify devel deploy the build folder for us. So this is just where uh, all the build files are going to be um, saved inside your project. Inside docs, we have all the documentation file that we're going to add to the Docusaurus website. Again, we can see this in tutorial here. So we have tutorial intro, which is this file intro, and then we have tutorial basic, which is a collapsible menu, and we have tutorial extra. And all the document inside these two tabs are located inside here. So if I go inside tutorial extra, we can see that we have manage docs version and translate your site. And we can navigate to these two files. And this file, of course, will have the markdown uh, code that is generating these two files here. Then we have all the node modules. Again, we don't have to worry too much about them because these are going to be managed automatically. We have the source file, SRC, which contains some components that we can create, some React components. We have the CSS where we can define our custom template. And I will make a video on that specifically, which we can manage the appearance of the website. So we can change, for instance, the color, the main color, and uh, how it renders in dark mode and light mode. Then we have pages. And index is the main page of the website. So it's basically the landing page when we land in our website here. So if I click here at the top on the logo, this is our index page. And if I'm going to change this file here, index, let me actually change it and say, and say instead of Docusaurus tutorial five minutes, we say 10 minutes, and then we switch back here this is hot reload, so as you can see, this button text has changed automatically. So now it says 10 minutes. Then we have source, so we have static, then we have static. Inside here, we have our images. So all the images that we have, we have some of the images, which is the logo, but also the five icon and the logo of the website, which is an SVG, and the main images that we have here on the landing page. Then finally, we have a couple of other files, which are the Git Ignore, which is of course needed when we're going to sync this project with GitHub. We have the Docusaurus config, which is a very important file, and we're going to go a little bit more in detail later on, what we need to change here, if we want to change uh, the project name, the icon, and now we can change the footer and the navigation bar. Then package.json contains all the dependencies for our project and then of course we have the readme and the sidebar. In the new version of Docusaurus it's very handy because the sidebar is auto-generated. So we'll not have to worry too much about the sidebar as we did in the previous tutorial about Docusaurus because this sidebar is going to be automatically generated. So that's all for this video. In this video you have learned how to get started with Docusaurus, how to start a new project locally, how you can change the text in the main page, and of course, going to display that much more in detail in the upcoming videos. We also have seen the project structure and the benefit of using uh, Docusaurus. In the next video, we're going to see how we can deploy Docusaurus on Netlify. And I've already uploaded a video on how to deploy it on GitHub Pages, if you prefer to use GitHub Pages. Thank you very much for listening, and if you found this video useful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. See you next time.